So we'll talk about the uh, uh, mobile apps and tablet apps uh, that are now very common. And then we'll walk through some detailed planning uh, uh, from an MFD versus a PC. Just say, what is it like to do detailed planning uh, at your helm station on one of these multifunction displays versus uh, on a PC? And then I'm gonna demo um, the, the Mac ENC ac application, uh, and then we'll take some questions at the end. So the modern crop of multifunction displays are super sleek now compared to some of the kit that you may see in some um, uh, more vintage vessels. They're all super sleek. They're heavily influenced by mobile computing revolution. Thanks to uh, Steve Jobs and the team at Apple, they're all flat glass displays, almost no buttons, maybe a power switch and a man overboard, uh, multi-touch screen so you can pinch and zoom. Um, and they have software keyboards. It's pretty much now the standard on all the top of the line, all top of the line equipment. Uh, some common features, uh, they all have multi-core processors, so they're super fast. Um, they have NMEA device network integration, so they can talk to all the kit on your boat, uh, all the sensors. And then um, most have Wi-Fi connectivity. Quite a few of them have will actually create a hotspot for you. Uh, and they have value add applications. So you can connect entertainment systems, control your music, uh, mobile phones. You can get te text messages at the helm, um, all sorts of fun. Um, Every one of them to a T has some sort of uh, marine chart ecosystem. Uh, either they are reselling it or they have a partner company that sells the charts that can go on your, on your uh, displays. And they have weather overlays. And via the connectivity to other devices, they do everything radar to sonar and, and fish finding and, and all that. So uh, one of the important things to note about that is that all the, all the new features Despite them, they're still not open systems. And there's some reasons why they're not. One is for security. And you could probably have read some articles recently about the new uh, gadgets in cars and, and making them connectable and then people concerned about getting your car hacked. <laughs> so, uh, and that would be the same thing for, uh, for a, a marine vessel. You really don't want uh, to open that up. So that's why they're closed. The other one is just simple business interests. Um, they want you to buy most of their hardware. Uh, most of them have um, numerous devices that all inter, inter work very well. They want to keep you in their ecosystem. And clearly, if they can um, upsell you on um, software and features, they want to do that too. So uh, security and, and business interest really drive why they're closed. And what I mean closed is that unlike uh, open systems, you, can, you can't just hook anything up to it. You can't just install anything on it. And in some respects, that's a good thing. Um, and in the past few years, what's, what's really changed a lot is that they have, you know, knowing that they keep these systems closed, they're moving to mobile companion apps uh, in order to share content. Because one of the problems with the closed system and what many sailors will say, how do I get my, my waypoints, my user content, my routes, my tracks, how do I get that from point A to point B? Because I, I can't just have it on this thing. How do I share it with friends and family? How do I, you know, uh, give a safety list for, um, for my route to some friends so they know where I am? So let's move on to the next. So I did, I just, I'm just pulling the big guns, right? So Furuno, Raymarine, Garmin, and Navco. Uh, Navico's got three brands, uh, B&G, Simrad, and Lawrence. They're pretty much what you're gonna find out there if you go to a boat show. Um, almost, pretty much all of them will support SD card and that's for the charts. You're gonna load your charts onto the plotter in that fashion. And, most of them have some major chart uh, companies that are out there. CMAP is one. That's a brand now owned by Navico. Uh, Garmin has their own. And Garmin is very vertically integrated. It's, it's always been that way. And, and it's their stuff and their stuff only. Um, Navionics is available on all of them. Uh, the three main ones, Furuno, Raymarine, and Navico, uh, directly uh, from, from Navionics. It's the Italian, the former Italian company. Uh, and in data form only on Garmin. So Garmin bought an avionics uh, and recently, and the, the data that uh, comes from their cartography are available on the Garmin branded apps uh, or maps. Uh, Map Media is owned by Furuno. Uh, and then for most of them, they'll, they'll have, uh, they'll use the NOAA charts uh, and uh, other national hydrographic organization charts. And some can support um, International Hydrographic Association encrypted charts. Uh, and but they do that through their own shops. So Raymarine does it through Lighthouse. They, they're they're re-ramping their Lighthouse uh, chart 
uh, cartography business and they'll be reselling those charts as well as the other ones that you can purchase from Navionics or CMAP. Uh, uh, Map Media, Furuno, they actually preload the charts. It's already on the plotter. They put like the whole entire Western Hemisphere on there and then you unlock it uh, with the key. Uh, and then uh, let's see, Navico has, uh, yeah, CMAP, they own CMAP. So, but typically you'd have to get a, a card. You get a card, you plug the card into that thing and you install those charts and that's what you have until you want to install more charts. Um, updates were a little bit complicated. You got to buy another card or get the card reloaded and then put that on the, on the chart plotter in a particular step. Um, now most of them do Wi-Fi. Uh, some of them will actually update over the air now uh, directly from the chart plotter. Uh, the example of the Furuno will just unlock what's already on there. Uh, if for the Navico, you can use their, their apps uh, and, and the GoFree store and pull the data down. Uh, for the rest of them, they now have companion apps and you, the plotter won't pull the charts, but you pull the charts to the, to the app and then the app will sync to the plotter. So the, the companion apps are across the board. Uh, so, you know, the, the major mobile operators, iOS or Android, are, is pretty much what the ecosystem is. Uh, they're, they're on phones and they're on tablets. And then you've got uh, Windows and Mac for the PCs. Um, and so you can see there that they all have um, uh, a companion app of one form or another. Uh, the NavNet remote app for the Furuno devices. Um, Raymarine has uh, two, RayConnect, uh, and also Navionics Boating. Uh, and Garmin has Active Captain. That's their only thing, the only one that will work uh, with, the, with, with the Garmin uh, equipment. And then Navico has uh, BNG. They've now just come out with what's called CMAP Embark application, which is going to replace the BNG app, but it's essentially uh, a chart store. It also shares data with the chart plotter. And then, of course, Navionics. They do Navionics loading. Um, most, of those, most of those are all available on, on the phone. Some have tablet versions. And then the only one of these crew that actually has a, a PC-based app uh, is the TZ Navigator. Uh, the, so they are uh, part of Furuno. And uh, those guys are writing the software for the app and for, the, and for PC. The PC ones won't actually communicate to the chart plotter, and neither will the others. What they do is they put it up in the cloud. So they, they synchronize it up into a home base, like the home mothership, and they put it back down to the plotter, but that's how you can get content to and from, to and from them. So uh, the other thing was about sharing routes we chatted about earlier. <clears throat> In this case, uh, if you have something other than one of these apps, the question is how do you get this, uh, this stuff into the plot chart plotter? Uh, Right. Thankfully, now we actually have ways to do it without having to use SD card. So typically, you would just bring an SD card. For the newer ones, they also support a USB drive. And you, you take if you're using a PC or, or a mobile device, you put the data on that card and you show up to the plotter and you plug it in. You could move your, your routes for your next uh, voyage uh, on the plotter that way. Now, all these apps support uh, sharing thanks to the mobile world. So you could email or AirDrop or iCloud um, your uh, routes and waypoints to the app, their companion app, and then from the app, get it to the plotter. And, and as we mentioned at the top of the, uh, top of the conversation, the reason they're doing that, they, they're not going to let everything connect. Even though they have Wi-Fi, you can't just connect anything to it. It's not going to give you the internet and let you just roam around inside that plotter. Uh, they, their app will control the access. So if you can get your goodies into the app, the app will talk uh, securely to the to that plotter. The last stuff at the bottom is about NMEA uh, 183 and 2000, which are a couple of specifications for the hardware network of the boat. Uh, and there was a time actually in the older ones where you could over the boat network send data directly, uh, but that went away. And when they moved to NMEA 2000, the, that stopped. Nobody has implemented the five or six um, communication protocols to get that on there. So there's just no way to do it over the actual boat network. It's amazing, but they don't want to talk <laughs> on a boat network. So, all right, let's go next. <clears throat> Here's a, a, just a quick view of the uh, mobile and tablet apps. Uh, and you can see the ones I've highlighted here in the, with the squares, these are proprietary. In other words, these are the only ones that will talk to your multifunction display on your boat. All the rest are open. 
uh, and they don't have a direct uh, way to communicate. And you'll, you'll, the number one player is INAVX. Uh, it will not talk to your plotters. Uh, you can't transfer things over. So you would get it from INAVX onto shared space, like an iCloud or an email, and then boating or active captain or CMAP or TZ iBoat can put it in the plotter for you. Um, but you'll note that the, the, the majority of those, that's the number one player there. Every, every season, they're going to be number one. Uh, boating is number 30, so they're fast on the heels of INAVX. Uh, active captains of 39s, and then way back in the, in the doldrums here are uh, the also RANs. Um, and they have tons of features. Uh, you can do full feature plotting. I'm a huge fan of the INAVX app. I, I, like, to, I like to have a plotter in my pocket when, when we're uh, on a cruise. Uh, and I'm crew and I'm um, on deck. I want, I'd like to be able to pull it out and know exactly where we are. I can see the instruments. Um, so it's helpful to, to have those things. So let's fast forward through the second list. They have a whole ton of features, everything from satellite terrains, anchor alarms. They'll connect to the uh, onboard AIS so you can see other vessels. Um, all the instruments can be displayed on there. Um, and then you can uh, real-time GPS and navigation. Uh, alerts for depth, alerts for the next uh, waypoint, um, and you can import export data. Some of them have social um, functions, so you can see your buddies. If you're in a regatta, you can see all your friends if everyone's plugged into the same, the same kit. So that's a good segue to talk about planning. Uh, so, you know, the older MFDs were pretty clunky, uh, the old wheel knobs, arrow keys, that kind of thing. Um, newer versions are very responsive and the new screens are well planned, uh, so it's better now. Um, but planning something more complex than a day sail can still be pretty tedious. Um, if your MFD is at the helm station, uh, it can be a little bit awkward. Usually they're flat, so you, you know, you'll be over the, over the helm typing stuff in. Um, and in the, if you have a second MFD, if you splash for another unit, they're not cheap uh, down below. Uh, even then, it's going to be flat against uh, usually a bulkhead or top of the, the nav station. Uh, unless you install a keyboard or a mouse, then, you, you know, again, you'll be touching and typing. Um, for keyboard, uh, if you're a keyboarder like me, the PC is so much faster. Keyboard, mouse, or a trackpad are really fast. Uh, some of the other advantages, like a laptop, allows planning from anywhere. I'm landlocked, so I'm a sailor only sometimes. Uh, and, and so typically we plan epic, epic cruises, and then we fly on down to the Caribbean and we pick up our charter and we spend 10 days on, on the ocean having fun. So I need to have that planned with me and I bring it down uh, when we go. Uh, PCs have huge application ecosystem to support planning and research. So especially if you're doing, uh, you know, multi-day passage planning and you're going to have multiple stops, you want to think about where you're going to go and what you're going to do. You know, so you'll be saying, should we go here? Maybe you'll pull up noon site and take a look and make sure there's no alerts about, you know, theft or piracy. Um, you want to double check maps and satellites. Okay, once we get there, let's go. What are we going to do? We want to go into town, visit some local eateries, see a museum. Um, you, you might want to email content from your, from your application uh, to coordinate with friends and crew. Uh, and spreadsheets and a thousand other applications that you have on a PC to help you uh, make choices and decisions as you're planning your planning your voyage. Uh, the downside is how to get your data into that multifunctional display. All right, uh, so that's it. It's demo time. I'm going to show you Mac ENC, and let me turn off my uh, screen slideshow here. All right, so. It wouldn't be a good talk about sailing if I didn't tell a story. So I should do that first before I do anything else. So Mac ENC is what I'm going to demonstrate to you. This is a 64-bit version. And I'll tell you a little story about how I first ran into the app and, and why I like it and, uh, and my experience, what drove me to even looking for a plotting app. So quite a number of years ago, uh, friends and I were uh, going to go. Uh, we were going to do a bareboat charter. And we want to do St. Lucia to, uh, to Martinique. Uh, and uh, I was going to be crew, uh, first mate, and my buddy's captain, and we had our families on board. Um, so we went down there, and we, you know, provisioned the boat. We did the boat briefing, did the chart briefing, and it, it was a long day in, so we were going to sleep over that night, and we would sleep on the boat, take off first thing in the morning to cross the channel. Um, 
and it was really late and uh we had the uh had the starboard berth in the in in the aft and i hear this beeping I'm trying to go to sleep i hear beeping upstairs and i said what the heck's going on so i come up there and there's my buddy hunched over the helm slogging in the waypoints for the route and this is the route right here and so we can uh we can zoom in a little bit it's not a ton i mean it's you know 30 40 maybe uh waypoints but he was beeping for a long time and i you know i'm a geek i you know i'm a pc kind of guy and i thought there's got to be a better way <laughs> so <laughs> that compelled me to start looking at chart plotters and saying hey how do you connect to these things and and how can you do this better and so uh the net result was that the next year we did the St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And I showed up with a card. I did the plotting for that trip. And I had the card with it. It was five minutes in. I think he spent maybe an hour and a half, two hours slogging away at that old chart plotter. And it was one of these guys. It was this old E series from Raymarine, that guy with the little wheel. Beep, beep, beep. Yeah, it was fun. Okay, so uh, I thought, let's do a survey of the app. So uh, this is Mac ENC. It only runs on Macs. So if you're a Mac person, this is for you. If you're not, sorry. Uh, maybe when we really get really big, we'll we'll port it over the Windows, and then you can get it there. Um, the let's do a survey of the of the, of the ribbon. So uh, in the file section is our chart manager. I'll show you what that looks like and how to manage getting chart content uh, into the app. Uh, and then view functions. Uh, you can control uh, the objects that you can see. On these ENCs, the beauty of the ENC is that all the data is dynamic, unlike a raster chart, which is um, which is a picture of a paper chart. Uh, and all the um, uh, hydrographic associations are moving from uh, raster to uh, to ENCs uh, because the quality of the ENC data has improved dramatically since the old days. A lot of old salts do not like uh, ENCs; they're it's paper or raster or nothing. Um, and I get that, um, but the, the ENCs are gonna be the wave of the future uh, and it allows a lot of features. You can turn some things off if you don't wanna look at it. Uh, okay, and then so uh, waypoints, we have a waypoint uh, uh, management system. So as you create your, uh, your points, it, it gives you a database that you can control those. Uh, routes, and we show routes, we create routes. Routes are collections of waypoints and we can also transfer them in and out. So this is the these are the features we talked about earlier. How do you get what you create into your into your boat or onto a mobile app uh, so that you can use them when you're underway? So that's how you do it with uh, by saving it to a file. The most common one is GPX. Pretty much every everybody uses that. All the chart plotters support it. Uh, all the mobile apps and all the PC apps support the, the GPX format. Um, tracks, it supports tracking. So of course, while you're underway, you want to keep a history of your route versus your planned, your actual versus your planned. And then it has connection options, right? So we can connect to all the boat networks uh, and then all the data that comes from all your instruments can be made available to the app. And we can also communicate to back to that equipment. Uh, we can also get the instruments, AIS and radar for, the, for, for that uh, information display all in the same place and then weather management. So you can request uh, grid files um, for various uh, conditions, uh, surface wind, temperatures, sea state, uh, precipitation, and get a file back and then load it up on the display so that you can plan your route. We'll take a peek at what that looks like. And then the window controls. So that's the high level view of it. Um, we should probably get out of our Grenadines view and take a look at how we Oh, no, that's actually Martinique. Let's go see about our other features. So let's look at our chart manager. And I have another screen, so I'm going to drag this over here and we'll take a peek at that. So this is essentially all the charts and I've got quite a few. Uh, not, every, not every sailor will have this many charts, but I, I, I helped develop the app with my folks. So I have to test. So I have a lot of extra goodies. Um, and we support uh, quite a few different charts. We have uh, the charts from the official uh, hydrographic associations. Uh, some of those are free and we support downloading those directly. Uh, others we have to pay for and we, uh, we have a partnership with Chart World and you can, uh, all, their, all their fare can be um, installed in our app <clears throat> and made for use. So the way you get some of the freebies is to fire up a thing called Download Manager. 
And then from Download Manager, I can add a catalog. And here's the here's the the, the NOAA charts. And we had the, all the Coast Guard districts. Uh, you can have a major pack full of those, or you can go by state or by region. And you select one of those. And once you've done that, then you you'll have it here. And you can the beauty of this is that you can keep it up to date. So obviously uh, conditions change, uh, and when they, when they update charts, you can just check an update. An example here, I've pulled up the Argentina RNCs, and these are raster charts, and just check and say, oh, look, there's a new one right there. So this is a safety feature. So you really don't, it's really not okay <laughs> to be traveling around on old, old charts. Um, things can change. Ace navigation can go away, it can be wiped out by storms. <clears throat> uh, undersea conditions can change, wrecks. So you really wanna keep current. And then this is very simple. You can select any or all or just new and download it and it will stick it over into the chart manager and you're off to the races. Uh, with external uh, third-party sold uh, charts, you need to, you'll need to be vigilant and just get updates. Most of those companies will send you notification if there's an update, and then you take a step to manually uh, update those charts. All right, that's Chart Manager. What's next? Uh, download Manager, we did that. Main Display Overview Controls, we did that. Okay. So uh, in this app, it, this is the main display and you, you can just grab and, and scroll. Uh, and then we have the, the zoom range and it covers everything from the overview all the way down to birthing uh, zoom. And then you just pick the level uh, that you want. And then, you know, being a PC, you can do it with, uh, with just a scroll wheel and just give a quick, quick flick and it will change. Or you can use a plus and minus arrow to get that. And then you can pan and zoom or just grab it with a little grabby hand and move it around. So it's very easy to navigate the actual uh, um, chart. And of course, you want to be able to do that so that you can um, create your waypoints. Uh, we also have a quick measurement. So if you're trying to decide what a particular measurement is, you can just do point to point and it hovers over. It will show you its, you know, its location, lat long and how far in nautical miles uh, that, you're, that you're measuring, which is quite handy. And then get, go away, zoom. <laughs> Where'd it go? I, I, the little zoom thing came down there. Okay. Uh, and this is the charting mode. So I'm gonna move my screen and come down to St. Lucia because, uh, and we'll, we'll just do a little bit of plotting, a little bit of uh, charting here to see what we wanna do. So what I'm gonna do is call up the routes and right now I'm showing you the old trip that we did back in 2015. And we're gonna get rid of that guy and we're gonna create a new, we're gonna stop showing that we're gonna create a new one. So let's create a new one. And it's, it's, a, it's also leave the Yacht Club. Oh, come back here, guy. Uh, why are we not, there we go. Okay. SYC is a new route. Okay, so we're only gonna show the, the stuff we wanna see. And one of the things you wanna do uh, before we start plotting is to uh, find out about our conditions. So let's go grab some weather, open a grib, get the wind. So I like sailing, that means sheets, that means we gotta have wind. And so let's take a peek at that. So now we have, uh, here's our barbs and typical great time. So today, and it looks like every day, you gotta love the trade winds. So 15 knots roughly, it's gonna be awesome sail. It's all uh, coming out of the east. So we're gonna go uh, mostly south, which means we'll have wind on the beam most of the way, uh, which is awesome, awesome sailing fun. Okay, so we know we got a good weather window. You can play this backwards and forwards. So you can watch the conditions change uh, as you, if you're planning across days, it's important to be able to do that. And you can refresh this as long as you have a, a connection. If you're going from bay to bay, you make it into, into, uh, into port and, and pull down uh, the latest and you can keep this refreshed and always check it. All right, so we know where we're gonna, where, where our wind's gonna come from and we know where we're gonna go. We're gonna go to the Grenadines, uh, St. Vincent and the Grenadines because it's awesome sailing down there. And I am gonna just open this up. We have a new route created and we're gonna zoom in a little bit. 
and we're going to start at Rodney Bay. Okay. Okay, there's the Rodney Bay Marina. That's where we'll pick up our, our boat. And the way this is designed is for pretty fast punch and go. Uh, and so you can just double click in charting mode and just fire up that waypoint. It assumes that every next waypoint you put is gonna be uh, on, uh, on the route. So we'll just add it to there. There's a channel right here that you wanna stay in. That's where the main traffic is rooted. So we're, we'll, we're just gonna head out into the bay. Uh, first, it's probably where we'll just motor out and then we'll flip into the wind because the wind's coming from the east and up with the sails and then tack around and head head south. Uh, and so you can just, it's very simple. You just grab and go. Um, and we'll probably put a point out here, your barrel reef. And then we want to go all the way down the side of the island. And there's a couple of things that can help you with the ACE navigation. Let's show those, some of those features real quick here. So let's get to the window and let's view our overview. Whoops, I turned it off. Where's my overview window? Come back, there we are. So we, this, this software comes with an overview window that lets you move big chunks without having to, to keep grabbing with the mouse and doing that. It makes life pretty simple. And you can just drag it over here like that, which is a great, uh, great feature. So let's get to the spot we want to go. And where are we here? Let's I think this is the right spot. Let's just drop another, another waypoint right there. All right. So and now we're on the land. All right. So let's fix that land problem. In the lee of these islands, the wind gets kind of dirty. Uh, and disturbed. So typically you want to just get out offshore. There's also a lot of fishing pots out there and you just don't want to get snagged. So it's good to take a run, run down here. There's just no value in hugging the shoreline. I mean, you, you'll get there a little bit slower, but it's, it's just not worth it. All right. And then uh, that'll take a good like half a day. And so we want to maybe stop off at the, at the, at the Pitons, beautiful two great volcanic mountains. And we'll put a waypoint there. And so, and here's where it gets interesting. Now all these chop plotters, the multifunction chop plotters and PC files, they're all gonna create the, the waypoint uh, and give it a, a number, but I, I don't like that. I really like names because they're more descriptive. You know where you're going. Chastinet, Mount Chastinet, and then let's go up to the top, and we'll call this one barrel. We can't call it barrel because I already have a barrel. And this is Roddy Bay Two. And it's in Marina. Okay, so. Oh, I already have the one from Marina. <laughs> I will leave it at WPO 454. All right, so I, that's a quick thing. It, it, you see it's really fast, uh, especially if you're a touch typer like myself, you just kind of rip through this stuff and, and you have a keyboard and a mouse or a trackpad and you can throw down a route pretty quickly. Um, some other route planning things, because we're on a PC platform, uh, you have access to other things. And the Apple operating environment is really awesome. It has, uh, we can call up other apps. Uh, there's a companion app called iTides and we'll let that fire up. And there's your tides and you'll have the calculations by day. Tides are not so bad, closer to the equator. Uh, so it's usually not a problem. Uh, the depths are all pretty good in this area, uh, but you know, it's, it's, it's nice to be able to have the ability to fire that up and it's gonna pull it up, uh, no, nope, don't save. It'll pull that up uh, right to wherever you are and give you the give you the actual um, tide stations nearby. And the other thing you want to do is um, is maybe launch a map. So if I right click and launch maps, Apple's maps when they first came out weren't that great. Google spanked them pretty hard, but they got better and they're actually quite good. Uh, and if you're heading to a destination, it's even it's even more useful. 
Uh, you can get, um, of course, satellite view. Let's scroll in. Satellite view of an area, which can be helpful. And then you can also get a road view of the area. And so let's say you've, you've, you're, gonna, you're gonna plot a place you wanna go to, and now you wanna be able to uh, um, go on land, maybe grab a scooter and go see the sites and stuff like that. So you can plan your trip. You can get online and look up a restaurant, put a waypoint and then for that, and then share it to your phone, jump in your dinghy, get on, get on land and go. Go have fun. So, a uh, lot of lot of cool features that you can use just because you're you're on a PC and you're not on a closed device. So uh, that's the charting and plotting. Let's see what else did we talk about? Uh, move modes, route detail. We did that. Grid to get weather, route creation, eye tides, maps. Wow, I'm following my my script. That's awesome. Uh, uh, show the object window. So we do have. Uh, there is an object window available, which gives you detail on these maps. Where's my objects? There we go. So the beauty of these ENCs is there is there are data about what you can see on the screen. Uh, and so you, if you have the particular aid to navigation, for example, uh, or rocks underground or underwater, where, come on, give me, give me my little mouse, there we go. Uh, there we go, we have a, a, a rock underwater. Yeah, give me that, come on you. It's not gonna give it to me, let's get closer. There we go. No, it's not, it's just a kind of astronomical tide. Let's look at some more goodies. There's a wreck nearby, let's go see that. There we go. There you go, we got a wreck, dangerous wreck. So all the data about the content. Uh, so uh, atons, whatever that's out there, uh, rocks awash, important information, all these are objects on the, uh, on the chart and you can touch on it uh, with a mouse click and it'll tell you what that is and give you information about it. All right, what else we got? Object navigation window, exporting waypoints and tracks. Okay, so. So we created that route, it's, that's a very short one, uh, but all you have to do is, it's all the current route. So whatever the, whatever the selected route is, is what I can transfer. So I can select a file, go to GPX. And if, you're, if you have iCloud or another sharing thing, you can just pick that and I keep my sailing routes here and I'll just export it. Okay, <clears throat> now you can just, if you have a, a, one of those companion apps, on your phone and you have iCloud or you have Dropbox or you have Box or you, worst, worst case, you mail it to yourself. Uh, you can go grab that and uh, pull it into that companion app for your multifunctional display and sync it over to your display and you're good to go. Um, conversely, you can also pull, if you're using, if using your display, I, I really love them on the, on, the, on the larger vessels. It's great to have them. They'll keep, they'll keep your tracks for you and if, you, if you're like a history buff and you wanna review your route, you can pull them off that chart plotter the same way with that app and share it with you and get it back on your PC. And you can say, hey, honey, remember when we went here? Um, oh yeah, look at that. Talk to your crew about you know, things going wrong, uh, lessons learned and that kind of thing. All right, uh, so other features are uh, GPS and instruments. So we're gonna, this starts our time. Our time is looking good, all right. This is an experiment because I'm actually, as you can see, not on a boat, uh, but we're gonna see what we can do about showing some of the features while you're underway. It will, it will work, uh, maybe. So let's give it a shot. All right, so I'm gonna get rid of this route. I'm gonna grab, um, where was that? Grenadines run, yeah, that was a great one. Okay, so let's get rid of that. All right. And over on another screen that you guys can't see, I'm gonna start up a little, oh no, he was running the whole time. <laughs> oh, we don't know where we are now.
well, you know, experiments, how they go, right? Always in a live demo. I know. <laughs> Guaranteed, man. Do a live demo. <laughs> All right. Hey, it's working. Well, there you go. Son of a gun. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> pretty much now uh, everyone's moving away from uh, connecting to boats with, you know, wires right we're all going wireless almost every app you know a mobile phone uh laptop now has uh, wi-fi with tcp ip these are the internet standards and so the best thing to do is to expose your boat network uh there's a ton of companies out there produce kit that will do that and once it's online it will it will send the data uh to your uh, devices uh, mo mobile phones and pcs etc so that's what we're doing here uh so now it thinks it's a gps for my little deal there. Let's get that out here. And let's actually give us some headway here. Uh, and then so right now, current speed is zero. My simulator won't do it. I can't be like Luna Rosa and get, you know, 35 knots and 15 knots of wind. But let's see if we can get uh, something somewhat fast. All right. All right. So now we're underway and, and a little boat icon looks like it's a boat now because it has a heading. Uh, and we've got uh, probably on, let's see if the uh, wind is coming from this direction, we're probably on a beam reach or broad, yeah, probably that. Okay, so let's go see. Uh, now you can uh, start the route and actually have it track, track the route. So let's take a look at that. All right, so we can choose uh, go to. And now, we get some different views. So now um, we are on a route and we're heading and I'm going to go to route up, which might be better. So let's do that. Oh, that's not what I needed to do. We're not going to do that. That didn't work the way I expected. All right. All right, so once we're once we're on a on a route, we're now traveling way faster than this probably boat will actually go, uh, but it will now travel to the next uh, waypoint, and it will show you the one that's that's next. Oh, we're actually heading away from it. Uh, let's see, is that right? Okay. Uh, uh, all right, so yeah, there you go. It's going to go this way. We could turn on tracking and start capturing uh, the track that we're headed on uh, and get the interval. Uh, in addition to that, um, the uh, you can control you get uh, connection to your instruments, so you can see that that that's available to you here. If you have AIS or radar on board, you can display those. You'll see the uh, traces of the other vessels. Uh, and then it's possible to control, you can um, repeat your data to a uh, to autopilot or, and it'll tell the autopilot about your next, uh, next waypoint. Um, I'm not a huge fan as a sailor. I prefer to handle my uh, tax and jibes personally. Uh, I'll just head to the next waypoint. Uh, certainly if you're on a motor launch, there's no reason why you couldn't uh, turn port or starboard at will. Uh, and as long as you have your eyes uh, out of the cockpit, you'll be fine. Um, so that's it. It works pretty much just like a, a standard multifunction plotter, has all the same features, talks to all the parts of the boat, but it just does it on a PC. All right, so we'll turn off our demo. We'll stop traveling. We'll stop going to... All right. Okay. So that's it. That's the main function. Um, some people don't even use a, a multifunction display. Some people are uh, happy to still use um, uh, paper charts uh, and, and uh, old school tools, your binnacle. Um, other folks are using some of the mobile devices. So because those mobile devices are so uh, robust, um, some people are happy to just to bolt on a, an iPad right there at the helm station uh, and use that. Or even if it's a small craft, you're really only day, uh, on day tripping, you just get it on your phone and head out. No reason why you can't do that. Um, one of the advantages of having a multifunction display is that they are hardened. 
they're they're appropriately built for a marine environment and we are still traveling why are we still traveling let's turn that off all right okay now we stopped all right okay so uh that's it that's the app happy to uh, talk about oops that's my little controller app that, there we go that's how i was simulating uh boat networks so that's it. Uh, Mac ESC64, uh, I bought this app uh, from a company uh, when they, they stopped uh, uh, updating it and uh, Mac OS moved on to 64-bit um, versions and it stopped working and I loved it and got mad at it and I'm a, a geek by day. So I went ahead and bought it and now me and a small team are upgrading it and adding new features and modernizing the look and feel of it and bringing it back out into the world. Okay, over to you guys. Happy to take questions. Awesome, Dave. Thank you very much. Uh, we got a couple questions coming in, and if others can type it in chat, that'd be great. But the first one uh, that we probably need to touch on. So the paper charts, uh, what's the date? And is it that they're no longer being updated by NOAA, or is it they're no longer going to be sold, or both? Good question. Good question. So what they're doing is, uh, so beginning of chart life, they were all on, they're all paper. Uh, and then they began to rasterize them. That means just scan them into electronic versions of a paper chart. And then they came up with ENCs where the chart was all, there's no paper involved, right? It's just data. Uh, and so it always began, make it on, make it real on paper convert it to a digital format, whether that's an RNC or uh, an ENC. Uh, they are gonna go away from that in that they will uh, start with the ENC first. So instead of paper to raster to ENC, they're gonna start with ENC. They're not gonna stop, you can still get a paper chart. And it's, it's, it, it's, so what they're gonna do is all their effort will go into, all their cartography will be ENC first, digital first, and then they're going to have printer companies that can print those charts for you uh, if you want. I think they'll have an online service too, but I don't think you can run it on your home printer. Um, but they'll have companies that will be able to print them and you can order them and get them. So you can still get a paper chart. And as much as I love electronics, I don't travel without a paper chart because, you know, <laughs> electronics get wet and they break. Paper can get wet, but you can still see them, right? <laughs> so... Uh, it's good to have a backup. Um, always travel with a backup. So yeah, so paper will still be there. It's just the, the way they're going to create them will be different. Okay. Okay. Um, Tom had a move to a planning commission meeting, I think for BCDC, but when it comes to hooking up, you know, external devices like depth sounders to it, what what is that, or even radar, you know, what does that process look like? How involved in, is it to tie everything together? you know, for somebody who already has some equipment on board, but maybe not right. a chart plotter. Sure. So if you have some equipment on board, uh, the, the considerations are, there are a couple considerations. Um, if it's an older vessel, a vintage vessel, some of your equipment may be dated. And so they're going to be, they may or may not be able to speak one of the uh, NMEA protocols. Um, most of them will at least be able to speak NMEA 0183, which was an old, older protocol. Uh, and they're, if they, if you had two or three devices, they're probably connected. They may be connected. You may have what would essentially be a network mm -hmm. of wires connecting those devices together. If you don't have that, then you, you'll have to research, determine if that device does have, can be connected and by what protocol. Um, if it's newer equipment, they'll all do NMEA 2000, which is a different thing. It's big barrel connectors and thick cables. Uh, and there's there's some kit you can get to bridge the two. So you have to do an inspection run and go see what you got. And then and once you understand what what those communication, what each of those devices can talk on, then you want to think about fitting out your network. Um, usually the route is you've got some older NMEA 0, uh, 0183 on the net and maybe some new devices that, that are 2000. And if they'd ever networked it, you're going to want to put a 2000 net and a 183 net and you put a bridge between them, a little piece of device. It'll talk both. Once you're there, then you can put you can put all of that onto uh, Wi-Fi 
Uh, there's a great company out of Russia, which, which uh, we resell for yacht devices, which makes a device the size of your thumb and you plug it in and it'll spray it on Wi-Fi and you can connect the world to it. Hmm. All right. Um, I have others, but any questions from anybody that's attending, feel free to unmute yourself and, and you know, pose your question to Dave directly. Dave, I'm wondering um, if Mac ENC works with uh, Bad Elf Pro or GP, other GPS uh, Bluetooth satellite receivers. If they speak, if the if satellite receive, yeah. So if they speak, if they're speaking uh, 183, 0183, uh, then they will. We can do uh, Bluetooth. I have a Garmin Glow, so I hook it up to the Garmin Glow. This guy right here. Okay. Yep, and it's Bluetooth, and it creates a serial port, and it plugs right in, and that's your GPS. I'm a big fan of, of connecting to the boat. If, if, if it's a larger boat and you've got boat equipment, I always want to run off the boat equipment. Uh, but if you don't have that, um, then these uh, the Garmin Glow uh, is awesome. Uh, the Glow 2, they're not that expensive. They're a bespoke. All they do is give you what you need, and they'll do both the... Uh, uh, the GPS, the US GPS network and the, and the Russian GLONASS. So you can pretty much guarantee you're gonna get a, a signal, a positioning signal pretty much anywhere. Yeah, I have stuff on the boat, but I, I like this for a backup, so. Backups are good, <laughs> just, <laughs> just like paper charts, exactly. That's my middle name. <laughs> yeah, buddy, I say two kinds of people, those that back up and those that will, right? <laughs> awesome. Uh, any other questions from the group? So, so Dave, for a question that I've had, and I'm just thinking about this, of, uh, you know, where where is the future for chart plotting, as an industry? Where yeah. where are we headed? Because you know we we come from, you know, the big multifunction displays they are getting slimmer, uh, but um, you know, and we keep having advances in either protocols, and I don't know if they're ever going to get more to an open protocol where we have more things talking together, but, but right. where's the industry headed? Well, I think the industry he is headed. Uh, I, I don't think they're going away. The big guys are not going away. I expect some consolidation. Um, I think that the, uh, the MFD is, is very, very practical, especially on a large vessel and, and, and absolutely at the helm. I, I, I love them. I really do. Uh, I think that the, uh, the new one net protocol may open up uh, this is from NMEA. Uh, that one's under, under, I guess, committee at this point, but that will be coming out soon. Um, I don't, I still don't know if they're going to open them up um, as far as talking to other stuff. But every one of them, if you go, if you just go watch, uh, check out the, the rags, the online rags and, and watch the feature set, they're in a feature race. They are screaming to get the next cool thing out. So um, I think the, I think what they're going to do is amp up more of their companion apps so that they are so robust that they'll keep you in their ecosystem. That's, that's the it's vertical integration. So for example, uh, the Garmin guys uh, bought out Navionics before Navionics was separate and they sold their charts to everybody. Now that they're part of Garmin, Garmin's mo uh, modus operandi is vertically integrated, their stuff and only their stuff, so help me stuff. Uh, and so I, I think that they're less and less available and pretty much only on Garmin. Mm -hmm. But they 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 saw how the um, the mobile apps uh, exploded over the past ten years, and they literally exploded. And people are using iPads and computers and phones to give do their chart plotting, and that's a threat. So the way they're countering that threat is to uh, to invest in those mobile apps themselves to take back that market share. And they're doing things like giving you the chart. You don't have to buy a separate set of charts. If you got a chart on your plotter, then you can see that chart on your phone or see it on your tablet and have it all around the boat and it's seamless connectivity to their kit and all the devices on the boat. Uh, so I really see that happening. They're going to close out as much of the third party guys as they possibly can. I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. I just don't I just don't see them. It's just not in their interest to open up all the way, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I always like it when industries open up 
from a interconnectivity <laughs> point, but I yeah. get it. It's a yeah, small uh, market. Yeah, ideally, if they if they open up API, they could be safe and open up APIs and, and let other people in. Um, and Avionics was very smart, and they uh, they marketed uh, their chart, their plotter sync to they're on every plotter except Garmin. Uh, well, because Garmin has them anyway. Uh, so um, yeah, but they had, so they actually wrote code and said, "Hey, chart plotter guy, put this in your plotter," and they and they made it worth their while, and they did, and that that's how you that's why you see Navionics charts uh, ubiquitously, and you can sync right from the app. So one option for third-party players to get their kit connected is to go approach them in that fashion uh, and, and, and talk about APIs. That lets the vendor control it uh, to their satisfaction and, you know, and, and for safety purposes, right, for security purposes, uh, but still lets in. So that's where I think it's headed. All right. Any other questions? The App Store, there's no, uh, there's no Mac ENC for an iPad yet, obviously, right? No, no. The closest thing is our is our sister app uh, from the company that used to have it. It was iNavX. Uh, they have uh, the they have the tablet version and the phone version. I use that myself, so I will sync my waypoints to it. I got my phone in my pocket. I got my my, my laptop here. I usually don't use an iPad uh, just because um, I'd rather be at the helm station uh, or my PC at the nav station or on deck with my with my phone in my pocket. So. Um, but, you know, at some point, uh, they, they are merging, uh, right now, the newest M1 Max will support, um, uh, iPad apps and phone apps on the Mac itself. Uh -huh. So that, that's a, that's a trend. Uh, and so that means that, uh, as we, as the code becomes more common, it, it, it might be an easy jump for us to, uh, crank out a, a mobile version, uh, of our, of our app. That'll be, uh, a future opportunity for us. Thanks. Great. Any other questions for Dave? All right, Dave, I, I think it's been a, a great hour. We appreciate you coming by. Thank you very much. And uh, you know, if anybody in the group has any further questions for Dave, I'll gladly share his email address with them and you can find him on the website. But uh, Dave, if you ever make it to Sausalito, please stop by the club. Let us know you're coming by. Gladly treat you to a nice dinner and bottle of wine while you're there. Awesome. I'm in. Thank you very much. And thanks, everyone, for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks, everybody. Have a good Thank night. Thank right. you. Terrific.